Hello everyone. I am Mrs. Radha Srinivasa Gopalan, President of Pondicherry India China Friendship Association. I'll be your English host for today. Our Chinese part will be translated and hosted by Ms. Sun Chienfeng, founder and director of Longfeng Palace in Zhengzhou, China. She's also a partner in promoting the Chinese culture in India and abroad. Today, it is a great honor for us to be present at this memorable occasion of celebrating the 112th birth anniversary of Xu Fancheng, the Forum on Chinese Culture and India-China Cultural Relations organized by Xu Fancheng Culture Study Center in collaboration with Longfeng Palace, Heartfulness Institute, and Pondicherry Youth Entrepreneurs Network. Today we have with us, we have our honorable chief guest, Mr. K. Lakshmi Narayanan, Minister, Department of Tourism. Madam Chandira Priyanka, Minister, Department of Art and Culture, Puducherry. Honorable Mr. Yang Shaocheng, Chief Regional Cooperation Office of Yunnan Province. Honorable Mr. Yang Shibin, Director of Foreign Affairs Office of the People's Government of Delhi City, Yunnan. Honorable Mr. Zhuang Haibo, Deputy Director of the Foreign Affairs Office, Joshan City, Zhejiang Province. Honorable Ms. Jo Li Ling, Deputy Director of Cultural and Tourism, Delhi City, Yunnan Province. Honorable Mr. Li Pei Ying, Deputy Director of Delhi Prefecture of Foreign Affairs Office. Honorable Mr. Shi Yu Bao, Chief of Delhi Prefecture of Foreign Affairs Office. Honorable Mr. Chen Gang Feng, Chief of the Foreign Affairs of Delhi Prefecture. Now we have the honorary guest speakers also for today's forum. Acharya Shri, Dr. Shri Varma Chairman, PCR Ayurveda Director, Heartfulness Institute. Yes. Professor Jang Rumi, Director for International Exchange and Cooperation Division of Delhi University, Yunnan. Professor Ramohan Singh, Department of Physical Education and Sport, School of Humanities, Pondicherry University. Mr. Hu Chien Chao, General Manager, Joshan Ningtai Ocean Fisheries Company Limited, Joshan, Zhejiang Province. Dr. Vidya Ramkumar, Chairperson, Crack Council of Pondicherry. Dr. Lin Yanming, Deputy Director of Institute of South Asian Studies, Yunnan Academy of Social Science. Ms. Chao Chen Rei, Head of the Indi Department, School of South and Southeast Asian Languages and Culture, Yunnan, Minsu University. Ms. Sun Xian Feng, Founder and Director, Longfeng Gong Palace, Zhenzhou, China. Mr. Victor I. R., CEO, Inspices International and Lux Interiors. Mr. Gopidan Murgayan, General Secretary, Pondicherry Youth Entrepreneurs Network. We also have four, four more guests from Zhenzhou, joining us as audience. Mr. Go Hao, Deputy Dean Professor, School of Art and Design, Hanan University of Finance. Ms. Lee Ke, Founder of International We Live. Mr. Yan Hua Zhang, Senior Photo Journalist, Hanan Province, China. Mr. Lu Fei, Bilingual Host, Hanan Radio and Television Station. Now I give the mic to Ms. Sun Xian Feng. Thank you, Ms. Lada Fren. I am Sun Xian Feng. I am very happy to be the host of the Chinese 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 克拉克施米纳拉亚南阁下本地治理旅游部长钱德拉普利，杨家阁下本地治理文化和艺术部长，杨绍成，云南省外事办党组成员，省国际区域办主任，杨锡斌，云南省大理州外事办主任，庄海波，浙江省舟山市人民政府外事办副主任，周丽玲，云南省大理州文旅局副局长，李培英，云南省大理州外事办副主任，陈更峰，云南省大理州外事办四级调研员。今天论坛的演讲嘉宾是。阿查里亚施里瓦尔玛博士 ，PCR 阿育吠陀主席，满心学院董事；张如梅，云南省大理大学国际教育学院院长；拉姆莫汉辛格先生，本地治理大学人文学院体育与运动系教授；于千超
。浙江省舟山市宁泰远洋渔业有限公司总经理贝迪亚拉姆库马尔博士。本地治理手工艺委员会主席林延明，云南省社会科学院南亚研究所副所长；曹晨瑞，云南省民族大学印地语教研室主任；孙显凤，河南省郑州市龙凤宫华夏古装摄影城创始人；维克多·英帕拉杰先生，印度启迪国际香料公司首席执行官；戈比汉·穆如加扬，本地治理青年企业家协会秘书长。我们还有来自郑州的四位嘉宾作为观众加入我们。郭浩，河南省财政金融学院艺术设计学院副院长、教授；李可，国际微直播创始人；严化庄，河南省资深媒体摄影记者；路飞，河南省广播电视台双语主持人。Now I give the mic to Madam Rada. By me in English and will be translated in Chinese by Miss Sun Chienfen. Respected dignitaries. Professors, officials, and people from Pondicherry, India, Yunnan Province, Delhi Prefecture, and Joshan City of China, we welcome you all, marking the 112th birth anniversary of Shu Fanqing, the first ever forum on Chinese culture and India-China cultural relations organized by Shu Fanqing Culture Study Center in collaboration with Longfeng Gong Palace. Heartfulness Institute and Pondicherry Youth Entrepreneurs Network. Today, it is a privilege for us, and we extend our gratitude to everyone who has come from far and near. We all know the fact that culture is diverse within our nations. The main fact that unites us is the desire to speak from a unified position on the global development of our cross-cultural society. The diversity of the culture among our countries is a unique advantage. India and China are multinational, multicultural, and multilingual. There is a huge potential in the field of educational and cultural tourism for youth among our countries. The issue of pandemic is temporary. We can prepare now and shape the direction of our globalization. With all the differences in lifestyle. And traditions among our nations as we travel, communicate, and learn about the culture and tradition of each other, we can build intercultural relations and policies where common moral values will shape the foundation of our future. 尊敬的印度本地智利、中国云南省大理州和浙江省舟山市的贵宾、教授、官员和人民。欢迎大家参加纪念徐范成一百一十二周年诞辰徐范成文化研究中心与龙凤宫满心学院本地治理青年企业家网络联合举办的首届中国文化与印中文化关系论坛。这是我们的荣幸。今天我们向来自五湖四海的每个人表示感谢。我们都知道，文化在我们国家是多种多样的。将我们团结起来的主要事实是，希望在跨文化社会的全球发展上。统一立场发言，我们各国文化的多样性是独特的优势。印度和中国是多民族、多文化和多语言的，我们各自在青年教育和文化旅游领域有着巨大的潜力。大流行的问题是暂时的，我们现在可以做好准备，并塑造我们全球化的方向。由于我们在旅行、交流和了解彼此的文化传承以及生活方式和传统存在差异，因此我们可以建立跨文化关系和政策。共同的道德价值观将奠定我们未来的基础。We can develop youth and students exchange platforms in the fields of literature, art, protecting cultural heritage, sustainable development goals, biodiversity protection, and engaging in environmental issues on the basis for international cooperation. If the policymakers can help provide grants and cooperation projects, it can help in shaping the cultural exchanges between India and China, and also will bring. More opportunities for the youths to contribute in making a better society. Shu Fancheng Culture Study Center and Longfeng Gong Palace have initiated a joint cultural video production where youths of India and China can contribute, and we can help in co-production of short videos on various cultural topics. Currently, it is a non-commercial pilot. Project to help build a greater India-China cultural cooperation. Videos are a powerful way to showcase different ethnicities, diversified cultures, 
laughter and dreams that try to tell uh, the story of our nations co-productions of such cultural documentaries and videos in the film and television industries can bring new scopes and opportunities 我们可以在国际合作的基础上，在文学、艺术、保护文化遗产、可持续发展目标、生物多样性保护和参与环境问题等领域，建立青年和学生交流平台。如果政策制定者能够帮助提供赠款和合作项目，将有助于塑造印中
both societies of India and China pressure the youths to do well in academics, find a good job, and settle by a certain age. Indian youths grew up with English literature and media with Western education and have also adopted English as their first language in some cases. Content of India and China in the digital and entertainment sphere is almost entirely in two or more different languages. Thus, language and cultural exchange among youths of India and China is more important to build a greater understanding. The two fast-growing countries, which also are the world's most populous, will play a big and a dominant role in shaping the environmental outcomes for our planet this century. We need to overcome the cultural and linguistic barriers. We need to overcome the cultural and linguistic barriers. We need to overcome the cultural and linguistic barriers. We need to overcome the cultural and linguistic barriers. We need to overcome the cultural and linguistic barriers. 此外 ，Z 世代在印度和中国的成熟速度更快。教育和文化是社会流动和青年的主要阶梯。今天，年轻人是地球上最强大的消费群体。在中国，他们是数字财富的主人。印度和中国社会都向他们的年轻人施加压力，要求他们在学业上取得好成绩，找到一份好工作，并在一定年龄之前安顿下来。印度青年在接受西方教育的英国文学和媒体中长大。在某些情况下，也将英语作为他们的第一语言。印度和中国在数字和娱乐领域的内容几乎完全是两种或两种以上不同的语言，因此，印度和中国青年之间的语言和文化交流对于增进了解更为重要，需要克服文化和语言障碍。这两个快速发展的国家，也是世界上人口最多的国家，将在本世纪塑造我们星球的环境成果方面发挥重要的主导作用。We need support in promoting cross-cultural exchanges. It is necessary to promote the intercultural and language studies between India and China. The embassies, cities, and provincial governments of China and India can support our initiatives to create mechanisms for such cooperations. New forms of civilizations will emerge from the convergence of minds, information, and technology. Scientific and technological breakthroughs will improve the human condition. Our challenges are transnational in nature and transinstitutional in solution. They cannot be addressed by any government or institution acting alone. What we require is collaborative action among governments, international organizations, corporations, universities, NGOs, and creative individuals of India and China. I am more than that. Write projects and support for our creative works. Thanking everyone for joining us today. We can build a better and a beautiful world together. We need to support the cross-cultural exchange. It is necessary to promote the cross-cultural exchange between India and China. The Indian and Chinese embassies, the government, the state governments, the provincial governments can support us in creating a mechanism for cooperation among these institutions. 新的文明形式将在思想、信息和技术的融合中出现。科技突破将改善人类状况。我们面临的挑战是跨国的，在解决方案上是跨机构的。任何政府或机构都无法单独解决这些问题。我们需要的是印度和中国的政府、国际组织、企业、大学、非政府人士和创意人士之间的合作行动，以及我们对创意项目的项目和支持。感谢大家今天加入我们，我们可以共同建设一个更美好、更美丽的世界。Okay, now we are just welcoming our Minister, Honorable Minister, Mr. Lake Lakshmi Narayan, Minister for Tourism, Puducherry. Thank 
Hello everyone. We are just continuing with our event. So now I would like to invite our keynote speaker, Honorable K. Lakshmi Narayanan, Minister, Department of Tourism, Puducherry. Hello. Uh, good evening to everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to join in this August Forum in getting the cultures of uh, both great countries, India and China. And I really thank all the invitees, dignitaries from both countries and different provinces of uh, China. It's a great place and we have been there for uh, uh, tourism, uh, tourism and cultural exchanges uh, three years back at uh, Dali and we have a lot of uh, invitations and uh, inquiries from our uh, counterparts of uh, China. I really thank our uh, Indochina Friendship Association of Puducherry chapter for giving us a chance to uh, come closer through this great event. The Puducherry as a whole, uh, India is a great country, you know well. It's a multicultural, multilinguistic and multi-religious multicultural uh, place where you can have all uh, important things with a great centuries-old history. Everyone would like to come to India, not as a tourist, as also a, a place where they can learn many great things, practices, good practice of uh, French enclave, for uh, 300 years during the British rule. We have a, dignity, um, a different culture, different uh, archaeological importance. Though normally people used to say that it is part of Tamil Nadu, a state with a lot of um, historical background. Puducherry is uh, different from Tamil Nadu, though it is uh, linguistically and uh, socially, it is well connected with the Tamil Nadu, being part of Tamil Nadu also. Puducherry is a place where you can see the multicultural people living in Puducherry with a lot of understanding. Tourists is a, I mean, Puducherry is a very best tourist destination and a favorite destination, all season favorite destination. That is why you wanted to have a good relationship with. Uh, uh, province like Yunnan and uh, other province where the local government used to give a lot of trust for uh, improving uh, the tourism activities. As we all know, the tourism is another uh, sector where you can get a lot of 
economic activities economic development includes the people's uh, financial uh, strengthening also so in that way puducherry and uh, as we have been there uh, to dali uh, we have come uh, come to understand that uh, many things are uh, similar to puducherry and uh, dali that is in uh, yunnan province so uh, we have been trying to establish lot of um, cultural uh and then our literal liter, literal relationship with uh, our uh, uh, province like yunnan uh, still we want to have a um, cultural exchanges and uh, we have been uh, doing some good work with the uh, zoshan um, province also uh, people from uh, the you know artists from uh john and uh, joshang and people have visited pancheri and they have participated in uh, a lot of um, um, art and culture activities so the the friendship association in puducherry is very strong and very much interested in uh, building good relationship with uh, our uh, um, good partners in uh, the uh, various uh, parts in uh, chinese provinces and we have been uh, uh, celebrating professor uh, zufang professor zufang uh, chang um, is literary and uh, uh, artistical works who was here for the almost uh, more than 50 years in puducherry in ashram and he has been uh, visited he has been to uh, india and he was there in other parts of uh, india also but professor zufang uh, zufang sang has uh, selected puducherry as his uh, place where he can uh, think aloud on culture literature and other fields so he is a pioneer of uh, chinese uh, great people who wanted to uh, come to puducherry and who wanted to establish Uh, a good relationship between india and uh, china and he was very fond of uh, indian literature uh, old literature and he has translated many things uh, in chinese language also so in a way he was a very good um, a bridge he was a connect uh, he was a gateway uh, for um, indian cultures and uh, chinese cultures to understand both uh, people so like to and we the people of puducherry and also the uh, association which has been formed to strengthen the relationship between uh, india and china that too through puducherry channel is uh, have is having lot of ideas and uh, our people have started uh, started a, a study center also here and uh, they have been uh, guiding lot of youngsters to know about uh, uh, chinese culture uh, chinese literature and uh, other form of uh, uh, ideas that is um, uh, through universities and other uh, mediums so normally the we want to feel that the whole world is um, won't by mankind there should not be a difference between uh, nations there should not be a difference or difference of opinion between the countries and there should not be any uh, uh, fight between the um, human communities in the world we like to have a better order and better living in the world we as a people uh, loving for a peace like to have strengthen the relationship human relationship with all countries especially with the china because we stand on similar legs on so many uh, friends and uh, moreover we have um, millions of years uh, rich cultural and heritage uh, history so it is natural that we will be working together 
to improve uh, cultural relationships and uh, the puducherry government uh, part of indian government will also uh, try to contribute all its um, efforts in building the good relationship between the two countries as a uh, uh, my colleague mr chatra priyanka was not able to come today and not able to attend today being a culture minister we assure you, you the chinese counterparts that in future definitely we will can have uh, exchange programs and uh, to inform you i would like to uh, invite as a minister for uh, tourism we used to conduct uh, all uh, international yoga festival every year during january and uh, uh, we know that uh, a good number of people from china that they are very much interested in learning yoga and practicing yoga also so if at all uh, will be uh, i just i am happy to extend a open invitation to all the dignitaries who are um, on this line to come and join to join with us during the international yoga festival schedule between uh, january um, uh, 4th to that is the first week of january so uh, yoga being a Uh, integral part of human life uh, people wants to join and learn more they can come and uh, they, actually the puducherry government is a only government which uh, conducts um, international yoga uh, for all yoga lovers so i would like to invite and i would like to uh, confirm my commitment for improving our better relationship between china and india through puducherry government i thank the organizers for giving an opportunity to share my views with all the uh, dignitaries uh, who have joined in this uh, virtual conference thank you thank you one and all thank you honorable lakshmi narayan for your wonderful speech Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Lakshmi Narayan, Mr. 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 Department of Tourism, and we wish to develop more cultural exchanges and tourism by the support of Sir in the future. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. The next keynote speaker, Honorable Chandira Priyanka, Minister of Department of Art and Culture. is just little, little away today to do some work so i request, request honorable k lakshmi narayan minister of tourism to talk on our behalf for the, the cultures for the department of art and culture which we can develop in pondicherry with china so thank you uh thank you once again uh, on behalf of our uh, colleague uh, and mr chandra priyanka who is a minister for culture uh, i would like to uh, give some ideas about uh, the and the possible cooperation between uh, china and uh, puducherry on cultural relationship see puducherry has got a very unique culture that's uh, we people of puducherry has got a um, you know four regions with the different cultures one is tamil local language and another is malayalam a west coast india part and another telugu speaking area yana and uh, basically you know well the puducherry was ruled by french for uh, almost uh, 300 years and still people are from french uh, people from france with the french nationality are living here and um, in the whole country are the french people has got a, uh, only the french people has got a special recognition for acquiring properties in puducherry as per the agreement between uh, government of france and government of india um, seven, uh, 75 years before apart from that we have a, a cultural site which is related to roman trading it's called arkimedu we have a good museum here where you can understand the uh, centuries old uh, 
cultures, riches of uh, Puducherry region. We are going to excavate a 2000 year old um, Arikimedu site, which will be uh, allowed for public in near future, which will tell the uh, trade between European countries and other Eastern countries 2000 years back. And apart from that, the Puducherry is a different culture. It's a, as I told uh, earlier, uh, normally we used to uh, be proud of uh, uh, some cultures like cuisine, multi cuisine, and um, uh, other uh, different uh, kind of things. But in fact, uh, Puducherry is a multicultural place. Uh, people from all over India are living here. You will be surprised to know that you know, there are uh, almost more than 50 language speaking people are living in Puducherry in a harmonious way. And uh, nearby our Puducherry, uh, based on the Sri Aurobindo and Sri Mother's vision, we have established an in international city called Auroville, where uh, people from many countries are living here. This has been established as an international city, uh, a place for a common place for all the world communities. So these are the special and uh, uh, unique uh, selling point of uh, culture of our Puducherry. And our people are very famous in Tamil literature, Telugu literature and uh, Malayalam literature. Our people have got a lot of uh, national Traditions, credentials for their uh, achievement in the literary and uh, art forms. And recently, we will be proud to say that uh, one of our um, citizens got a national highest award, uh, Sri, for uh, the terracotta dolls. It is very famous in Puducherry. So, uh, Puducherry is um, as uh, great in. Uh, many cultures and uh, arts and uh, literature like uh, any other part of India. Uh, if you want to see the whole India in one place, see, for example, you know well that India has got 29 states. And if you want to see uh, the whole India's culture in one at one place, I think you, it will be the Puducherry yeah, better place because people from all over the country with a different uh, language, with a different culture, different uh, uh, lifestyle, are living peacefully in Puducherry. And a lot of uh, French nationals also live here. So, uh, yeah, different kind of world you would like to come. And uh, our um, uh, Puducherry has got a very beautiful beaches now. Uh, the Puducherry, one of the best beaches, got an award from Denmark government with uh, blue flag uh, credential, uh, blue flag um, uh, certification. It means it's a, a very clean and uh, green, eco-friendly beach. With that, uh, anyone wants to come and um, visit Puducherry and see Puducherry, definitely they will, uh, they will have a good time to stay and enjoy the different uh, culture of Puducherry. So, and... Uh, the culture department also um, encouraging a lot of artists, uh, folklore and uh, traditional uh, 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 um, um, performing arts and then um, uh, other form of arts also. There are a good number of people who are excelled themselves in a uh, lot of uh, cultural activities. And uh, we can also exchange, uh, conduct exchange programs uh, between the two countries. So I thank on behalf of the uh, Minister for Culture also for uh, giving this opportunity to exchange our uh, views on, on this. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, very much for your wonderful and excellent speech on Department for Art and Culture. Really, we are very proud to have this, sir, for as a minister for Puducherry, he is the one and the only one who is well versed in all the subjects who can talk as well as in tourism, as well as in art and culture, and in any technology also. 
he is a only only well learned experienced person whom i wish so i wish him always a great success in every step of his life and for his service pudicherry deserves him a lot so i thank him once again for his giving his precious time to spend with us today this afternoon for this event please give him a big hand okay now i would like like to invite the next keynote speech honorable mr yang shao cheng chief regional cooperation officer of yunnan province Tourism Minister of Monetary, Honorable Ms. Nata, President of Monetary India China Friendship Association. Dear friends from China and India, good afternoon, Namaste. It's very a great pleasure for me to attend the. Express my sincere thanks to Xu Fancheng Cultural Study Center for inviting us to attend this important and meaningful event, and I want to express my warm congratulations to this center on the successful organizing of this event. I would like to take this opportunity. To give give a brief introduction to Yunnan Province. Yunnan Province, located in southwestern China, covers a total area of three hundred and ninety four thousand square kilometers, with a population over forty seven million. As a land of poetry and dreams, Yunnan Province enjoys the following four basic features. First, a border province. Yunnan is located in southwestern China, with a borderline line of about 4,060 kilometers, with borders with Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam, and not far from other Southeast Asian countries and the South Asian countries, including India. Second, a multi-ethnic province. Ethnic variety of Yunnan is unparalleled in China. Aside from the Han people, there are 25 minority ethnic groups with a population of over 6,000. The population of ethnic minorities is more than one third of the total population of Yunnan, with colorful and diversified ethnic cultures. Third, a mountainous province. Yunnan boasts an outstanding diversity of landscapes, with 94 percent of the total land area classified as the mountains and the plateaus. The highest mountain peak is 6,6740 meters, and the lowest land point is only 76 above the sea level in Yunnan Province. Fourth, a beautiful province, Yunnan enjoys a global climate and harbors. Well-preserved ecological environment, where mountain, river valleys, lakes, meadows, and forests coexist, we strive to build Yunnan into the most beautiful province in China by protecting the major plateau lakes and taking systematic measures to build beautiful counties, beautiful towns, beautiful villages, and beautiful highways featuring Yunnan elements. Endowed with these unique features and the development opportunities, Yunnan Province has enjoyed rapid and sound economic development in recent years. During the 13th five-year five plan period, that is from 2016 to 2020, its annual growth rate was two percentage points higher than the national average. Currently, Yunnan ranks the 18th. Among the provinces, autonomous regions, and municipalities across the country, in terms of economic power, moving up five places from the pre previous period. 
the province is striving to develop world's first class green energy, green food, and building Vietnam into a destination for healthy living, or which dubbed as three cars, that is green energy, green food, and green tourism, providing transport to promote the high quality development of Vietnam by leaps and bounds, and the goal of building a moderate prosperous society in all respects has been accomplished in Vietnam province on schedule, together with the whole nation. Vietnam has always attached great importance to the front exchange cooperation with India. In history, Vietnam was connected with India by the Southern Silk Road and Tea Horse Trail. In the early 15th century, the great Chinese navigator and the diplomat, Admiral Chung Huo, who was born in Quanyang of Yunnan province, he made seven voyages to India Ocean and visited India for six times. During World War II, the renowned Steel Railroad and the Hump Flight Route also linked Yunnan with India, making great contribution to the victory against the Japanese aggression. In recent years, under the support and guidance of the Chinese Embassy in India, the Chinese Consulate General in Calcutta and Mumbai, we have forged closer cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges and economic trade cooperation with India, especially with relevant Eastern India states, Pondicherry, New Delhi, and Kanakata, exactly. The 13th meeting of the BCIM Regional Corporation, that is among Bangladesh, China, India, and Myanmar. This co regional cooperative forum was held in Vietnam in June 2019, greatly promoting the BCIM economic corridor development. India delegation from different circles also came to Vietnam for friendly visits, attending international exhibitions and conventions in Vietnam, like China South Asia Expo and the China South Asia Cooperation Forum. We are delighted to see more communications and the cooperation between Pondicherry and Dali Prefecture. Pondicherry boasts unique culture and tourist resources and enjoys fast economic development. As just noted, Dali is a very famous tourist destination in China and also abroad. We will continue to support Dali in launching more exchanges with Pondicherry in culture, education, tourism, and of course, economic cooperation. As His Excellency Chinese Prince Xi Jinping noted in his speech at the opening ceremony of the Conference on Dialogue of Asian Civilizations, diversity spurs interaction among civilizations, which in turn promotes mutual learning and further development. As two great Asian civilizations, China and India has, have always learned from each other and enriched their own civilizations through these mutual learnings. In the history of our cultural exchanges, ancient masters and modern pioneers who made significant contributions deserve to be well remembered. Professor Xu Fan Cheng is one of these most outstanding figures. He spent nearly three decades in Pondicherry and devoted his whole life to promoting the friendly understanding of friendship between China and India. With this celebration of the 112th birth anniversary of Xu Fan Cheng, let's commemorate him and carry on his legacy with concrete actions. Standing on the shoulders of the master and the forefathers, we shall make new contributions of mutual exchanges and cooperation with the characteristics of this new era. I believe that the 112th birth anniversary of Xi Fan Chen will surely promote the exchange of cooperation between China and India. We sincerely welcome 
more friends from India, particularly from Pondicherry, to conduct more exchange cooperation with Vietnam province. Under the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, more online exchange events can be carried out for better understanding. Once the fight against the pandemic is won globally, and cross-border and internet travel is permitted, we do hope to have more mutual visits with our India friends to further discuss opportunities for exchange cooperation for our joint development. We believe that with more mutual exchange and cooperation activities, more chapters of friendly stories between the two sides will be written and recorded, making contributions to the development of China-India relations. Here I want to mention the Beijing Winter Olympics is approaching, which will take place on February 4th, 2022. It is a major event for global winter sports, athletes and lovers. It is also a great event for friendship and cultural exchanges. We believe that under the guidance of the Olympic spirit and with joint efforts of all sides, China will deliver a streamlined, safe, and a splendid Olympics to the world. We welcome winter sports athletes from all over the world, including India, to attend this event for their great performance. To conclude my speech, I wish this anniversary event a complete success. Hope all of you and your families stay safe and healthy during the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Wish you happiness every success in the coming new year. Happy New Year 2022 in advance. And thank you all. Thank you. Mr. Young Shouting, thank you very much for your wonderful speech. We welcome you to come to Pondicherry. Now, our next speaker, keynote speak, is by Honorable Mr. Yang Shibin, Director of Foreign Affairs Office of the People's Government of Delhi City, Yunnan. Distinguished Ministers, President Rada, Director Yang Shaochen, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, nice to meet you all. 非常高兴应邀在谢善参加中国选者徐凡成先生诞辰一百一十二周年的纪念活动。有幸能与各位朋友、各位同事进行交流。It's a great pleasure to be invited to celebrate the 112th birthday of Xu Fancheng via video link and to communicate with you all. 中英两国都是世界文明古国，在漫长的历史长河中。两国的文化交流推动了，推动和发展了两国关系，促进了民心相通，也对世界产生了积极影响。徐凡成先生毕生致力于推动中印文化交流，今天举办这个活动的目的，一是纪念徐凡成先生为中印文化交流所做的贡
，希望发挥外事部门的作用，牵线搭桥，通过各方的参与，共同努力，进一步加强在文化、教育、旅游、经贸等领域的交流与合作，让大理与北地治理之间友好关系迈上新台阶，让交流合作成果惠及双边更多的人民。We do appreciate the efforts made by the India and China Friendship Association and Shi Fanchen Cultural Research Center in promoting bilateral friendly relationships between Delhi and Pondicherry. Today, in Delhi Conference Venue, we have Professor, Dean of the International Education of Delhi University and Vice Director of Tourism and Cultural Bureau of Delhi with us, with the hope to work closely to further the cooperation and exchange in culture, tourism, and education. And to bring the friendly relationship between Delhi and Pondicherry to a new level, so that it can benefit more people on both sides. 二零二二北京冬奥会及冬残奥会已进入了倒计时。这场以纯洁的冰雪、激情的约会为主题的盛会的举办，必将为国际社会增进团结、加深友谊发挥重要作用。也衷心的希望大家关心关注。共同感受冰雪运动的美好，为北京冬奥喝彩。The countdown for the 2020 Beijing Winter Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games has begun, and the theme of joyful handiwork upon pure ice and, and snow, uniting the passion of hundreds of millions for winter sports. This grand gathering will play a positive and important role in promoting international solidarity and expanding friendship. Let's embrace this winter game and cheer for Beijing Winter Olympics. 有一种生活方式叫大理。大理是中国历史文化名城，是中国最佳魅力城市，也是中国最佳爱情表白地。你一个人来大理，可以寻找诗和远方，邂逅浪漫；两个人来大理，可以许下山盟海誓，借债海枯石烂。一家人来大理，可以漫步苍耳，体味乡愁。欢迎大大家到大理来，我们在苍山之畔、洱海之滨等着你。我们相信你在大理的遇见，将是美丽的遇见，也是幸福的遇见。Delhi is more than the name of a place; it's still a way of life. As a historical, cultural, and intri intriguing city, Delhi is the best place to see our love. Delhi has a lot offered to various tourist groups. There are hope and poetry for tourists who come to Lowen, romance and sweetness for beloved ones, warm and homing experience for families. We warmly welcome guests, both domestic and abroad, to Delhi to the beautiful views of Tanshan Mountain and Ahai Lake, and you will have a beautiful and happy encounters in Delhi. 最后，衷心祝愿本次活动取得圆满成功。祝各位身体健康，幸福吉祥。谢谢。To conclude, I sincerely wish this event a complete success and wish you all good health and all the best. Thank you. Jibin, thank you very much for your wonderful speech. You have been very helpful during the Pondicherry delegation visit to Delhi City. And we are very thankful to you. I invite, welcome you to Pondicherry. Please do come. So our next speaker is Honorable Mr. Jong Haibo, Deputy Director, Joshan People's Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries, Joshan City, Zhejiang Province. Honorable K. Kashi Minyarayana, Minister, Department of Tourism, Pondicherry. Honorable President Lada, Honorable Director Yang Sao Chen, Director Yang Xi Bing, dear guests, friends, good afternoon. I'm honored to participate in this event. I want to thank the Pondicherry India China Friendship Association for the kind invitation and thank all the friends who helped bring about this event. We are gathered today to cherish the memory of Xu Banchen and to dis discuss new prospects for exchange and cooperation with each other. As two ancient civilizations, 
China and India have a long history of cultural exchange. With a passion for Indian and Chinese cultures for more than three decades, Sri Fanson made a huge efforts to introduce the two cultures to each other. Opening an important window for cultural exchange between the two countries. A glorious chapter has been written in the history of communication between India and China. In 2019, I was honored to visit Pondicherry with our city leaders, and I was very impressed. Thank you again, Minister Kailakashi Minalwariana and Madam Rada for your kind hospitality. Pondicherry and Josan enjoy a wide range of possibilities for exchange and cooperation. In view of this, Zosan Municipal People's Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries signed the MOU on friendly cooperation with the Pondicherry Indian China Friendship Association to work together and seek shared success. Now, I want to take this opportunity to give you a brief introduction of my city and share with you my thoughts on our cooperation going forward. Zhoshan City is located in the northeast of Zhejiang province near Shanghai. It is China's first archipelago city. As of 2020, its permanent population was 1.15 million with GDP per capita standing at 20,000 US dollars. Comprised of more than 2,000 islands, large and small, Zosan is a maritime city reliant on the ocean for survival and development. It boasts unique maritime advantages and is known as a garden city by the sea and an excellent tourist city in China. It enjoys a slate of national strategies such as national level new area and the Zhejiang pilot polluted zone. And it is indeed a gateway city for China to open up to the Pan-Pacific economic circle. In these years, we have focused on tapping the advantages of marine cultural resources and build a series of excellent international exchange platforms. Four editions of the International Islands Tourism Conference have been held in a row to promote international marine tourism corporations since 2015. Two editions of Hands Across Pacific Art Exhibition have been held to foster diverse dialogue on art and culture in Pacific Rim countries. Four editions of International Petroleum and Natural Gas Enterprises Conference have been held in a role to establish a major platform for extensive exchanges and cooperation between international oil and gas companies since 2018. Since last year, most foreign affairs activities have been carried out on the cloud because of the pandemic. Today's event has built a good platform to promote mutual exchanges. We hope that in the future, both of us will hold more events like this. Going forward, we hope to strengthen exchanges and cooperation between Pondicherry and Zosan in cultural fields including Buddhism exchange. In economic and trade fields, especially distance water, fishing, and fishery products processing. In personal, in personnel exchange, especially industrial personnel training and college students exchange. In tourism and people to people exchange to promote our common development. Ladies and gentlemen, embraced by mountains and seas, Zosan is an open city. Its people, like me, are sincere and enthusiastic. We sincerely invite all guests to visit Zosan. I also truly hope 
that the friendly exchange between Yunnan and Henan province and Pondicherry will continue to blossom and bear fruit, fruitful result. In closing, I wish you every success, good health, and all the best. I wish the full success of this event. Thank you all. Now I would like to invite Dr. Bikash Kalidas and Ms. Sun Chian Feng for the MOU signing ceremony between Xu Fancheng Culture Study Center and Long Feng Gong Palace. <laughs> This gathering, I would like to extend all of our best wishes and a happy and a long uh, years to come to serve the and also uh, uh, she's the backbone, she's the backbone, for, backbone for this, for this uh, association. association. I would like, so to, I would like to uh, wish her with, uh, with a tall and bouquet for a long, for a for long, for a long, for a long, for a long, long life. For a long life. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now let's watch a short video on, on Shufan Singh's joint, joint production, production from Shufan Singh's study center, center, center and Long Feng Gong Palace, Zhenzhou, China. China. Chong the Xuanjiang of Modern Times. A philosopher, translator, painter and one of the most well-known Indo-Sinologists the world has ever known. Shu Fan Cheng was born on October 26, 1909 in Changsha, Hunan province of China. Xu Fan Cheng 1909年10月26日生于湖南长沙,世界著名的中国和印度的学者. He was taught by the student of the late Qing Dynasty Confucian scholar Wang Kaiyun, and he was mentored 
by Lu Xun in his early life. 他师从晚清著名儒家学者王凯韵，早年受到鲁迅的指导。Chairman Mao was Xu Fangcheng's geography teacher. Mao 主席是徐范成的地理老师。He was among the first Chinese who studied the art of wood engravings. Lu Xun mentioned many times about Xu Fangcheng in his diary. 他是最早研究木板画艺术的中国人之一。鲁迅在日记中多次提到徐范成。He was well versed in nine languages, which included Chinese, both simplified and traditional, English, German, French, Sanskrit, Hindi, Latin, and Greek. 他精通中文、简繁体、英文、德文、法文、梵文、印第文、拉丁文、希腊文等九种语言。He was a versatile scholar, as well as a great painter. He had an in-depth study of Chinese culture, Indian culture, and Western culture. He is a very versatile scholar, and he is also a very great painter. He has a deep knowledge of Chinese culture, Indian culture, and Western culture. Xu Fangcheng translated 50 Upanishads in Chinese. He was the first Chinese scholar who systematically represented the great Upanishads in Chinese. 徐范成译著《五十奥义书》，他是第一个系统的用中文代表奥义书的中国学者。Xu Fan Cheng translated Nietzsche's philosophy, also struck Jarasthustra, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Confucianism, Kalidasa's Meghduta. And several of Sri Aurobindo and Mother Mira Alfasa's works into Chinese. Xu Fan Cheng translated Nietzsche's philosophy 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 into Chinese. Xu Fan Cheng translated Nietzsche's To demonstrate the influence of Buddhism on native languages in China, and cultural exchange and assimilation between China and India, providing new approaches and aspirations for India-China cultural studies. He from the linguistic perspective, took the comparison of Chinese and Chinese and Chinese and Chinese dialects and the influence of Buddhism on native languages in China, and the cultural exchange and assimilation between China and India, providing new approaches and aspirations for India-China cultural studies. He from the linguistic perspective, took the comparison of Chinese and Chinese and Chinese and Chinese dialects and the influence of Buddhism on native languages in China, and the cultural exchange and assimilation between China and India. In his works, Xu Fan Cheng adopted an original style of Li Sao and Chinese poetry by composing his own poems on the basis of the original meaning. In his works, Xu Fan Cheng adopted an original style of Li Sao and Chinese poetry by composing his own poems on the basis of the original meaning. The manuscript of the Bhagavad Gita was collected by the National Library of China. 手抄本《博伽梵歌》的原稿被中国国家图书馆名家文库收藏。Xu Fan Cheng came to India in 1945 at Shantini Ketan to teach Buddhism and lived a period of 33 years in India. 一九四五年，他作为一位学者到印度泰戈尔国际大学讲学。在印度生活了三十三年。He traveled to Pondicherry in 1951. Mother Mira Alfasa, a French spiritual saint known as the Mother, gave him shelter at Pondicherry. 一九五一年，他前往本地治理。被称为母亲的法国精神圣人米拉阿尔法萨，在本地治理，给他照顾与帮助。Xu Fan Cheng continued his works for a period of 27 years 
at Pondicherry, where he translated many of the philosophical books written by Sri Aurobindo and the mother. Sri Fan Cheng, in Bandi Zhili, continued his work for 27 years. In that place, he translated Aurobindo and the Holy Mother Alpha Sa's books into many philosophical works. He was also a Chinese painter and calligrapher. More than 500 Chinese paintings can be found at Pondicherry. He was also a Chinese painter and calligrapher. In Pondicherry, you can find more than 500 Chinese paintings. After the demise of Mother Mira Alfasa, Shu Fan Cheng returned back to China in 1978 and continued as a researcher. And professor at the Research Institute of World Religions of the Chinese Academy of Social Science. 在母亲米拉阿尔法萨去世后，一九七八年，徐范成回国，在北京中国社会科学院世界宗教研究所任研究员、教授。In his journey from Pondicherry, India, to Beijing, China, Shu Fan Cheng was helped by a noble-hearted Chinese person named Shao Jiayu Ramana. Shao Jiayu lives in India and he is in his 80s, who promotes India-China cultural relations from the deepest of his heart. In his journey from India to Beijing, Shu Fan Cheng received the help of a noble Chinese person named Shao Jiayu Ramana. His name is Shao Jiayu Ramana. His name is Shao Jiayu Ramana. His name is Shao Jiayu Ramana. 范文明 Romana， 邵家游先去印度，八十多岁，为推动印中文化关系，一直在奉献。Shu Fan Cheng taught many scholars and renowned persons, which includes Ambassador Luo Zhaohui, who was the former Chinese ambassador to India and China's vice foreign minister. 徐范成教授过许多学者和知名人士，其中包括前中国驻印度大使、中国外交部副部长罗兆辉。Beijing, March 6, 2000, Xu Fancheng expired, leaving behind his great legacy with many of his finished and unfinished works. In the field of spiritual philosophy, a 16-volume edition of his complete works was published in 2006. 二零零零年三月六日，徐范成逝世，留下了他在精神哲学领域的许多已完成和未完成的作品。他的十六卷全集于二零零六年出版。In 2018, an international symposium on Shu Fan Cheng was held at Pondicherry, inaugurated by Ambassador Luo Zhaohui. The event was participated by many prominent scholars, such as Councillor Zhang Jianxin, Professor Wang Xinchuan, Professor Wang Xianian, Professor Priya Darshi, Professor Nirmala Sharma, Professor Sharad Joshi, and various notable speakers addressed to the audience. 二零一八年，徐范成国际研讨会在本地治理举行，由中国外交部副部长、中国驻印度大使罗兆辉主持开幕。参加此次活动的有中国驻印度大使馆文教参赞张建新、黄新川教授、黄夏年教授、布迪亚德施教授、尼德马拉沙德马教授、塞拉德焦什教授等多位知名学者参加。多位著名演讲者向观众致辞。December 27, 2018, China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi and India's External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj inaugurated the book Essays in Memory of Shu Fan Cheng. 二零一八年十二月二十七日，中国外交部长王毅与印度外长斯瓦拉杰共同为纪念徐范成国际研讨会文集揭幕。On 26th October 2020, Shu Fan Cheng Culture Study Center was officially inaugurated by Ambassador Sun Wedong. 
。二零二零年十月二十六日，中国驻印度大使孙卫东为徐范成文化学习中心正式揭牌。Xu Fancheng once said that if you want to see how Lao Tzu's philosophy is put into practice, you should come to Pondicherry and have a look. Xu Fancheng 曾经说过，你若是想要看到老子的哲学是怎样被实践的，你就应该来本地治理看一看。Xu Fancheng was one of the great Chinese Sanskrit scholars. In the modern history of India, China, and Western cultural relations, Xu Fancheng is the most influential Chinese scholar in Chinese history. Xu Fancheng was the most influential Chinese scholar in Chinese history. Xu Fancheng was the most influential Chinese scholar in Chinese history. Xu Fancheng was the most influential Chinese scholar in Chinese history. 今天，在印中关系领域，他被视为印中之间最伟大的文化桥梁，也被称为现代玄奘。Thank you for watching. Remember to like, share. And comment. 谢谢您的观看，记得点赞、分享和评论哦。Thank you. It was really a very beautiful video. I hope all of you enjoyed it. Now I invite Miss Sun Chianfeng to give a short speech, which will be translated by. Dr. Vikas Kalidas. 尊敬的各位领导、贵宾、关注本次会议的朋友们，大家好。我今天演讲的题目是《传统文化的传承与发展》。感谢徐范成先生架起中印友谊的桥梁。No, I can. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, beginning from beginning. From beginning, yeah. From beginning. Oh, okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, from beginning. Wait for what? Okay. Hmm. Now it's okay. Alright, it's okay. Okay. 尊敬的各位领导、贵宾、关注本次会议的朋友们，大家好。我今天演讲的题目是《传统文化的传承与发展》。感谢徐范成先生架起中印友谊的桥梁，在先生112周年诞辰之际，作为晚辈，想起父亲翻看那对古旧线装家书时，文图赫然，高山仰止，虽不能至，心向往之。记得母亲告诫：“一粥一饭，当思来之不易。”想起天下兴亡，匹夫有责。The theme of the speech is the inheritance and development of traditional culture. Respected leaders, distinguished guests, friends who are following this meeting, welcome to all of you. Thanks to Xu Fancheng for setting up the bridge between China-India friendship. When I was young, I remembered my father flipping through the pile of old books. Those texts picture is impressive and intellectually of great heights that can't be reached so easily. But I yearn for it. I remember my mother admonished one porridge and a meal is hard to come by. When you eat each bowl of the porridge and rice, you should think about how many people worked hard for it, and how much labor is consumed in this porridge and rice. Every ordinary person is responsible for the prosperity or decline of the country. China is a liberal democracy, and the liberal democracy is a liberal. 故我心存敬畏，筹备年余。于十一年前，在郑州创立龙凤宫华夏古装摄影城。一日梦回千年，赏雪、后月、寻幽、抚琴，可焚香品茗，亦可挥毫舞剑。君子之乐聚在其中。
但求不辱使命，当好传统文化的守护者和传播者。中国有礼仪之大，故称夏；有服装之美，谓之华。词书之祖尔雅说：“华夏的华，特指桃花。夸父追日未果，其手杖所画，故有五十六个民族，五十六枝花。” China is the land of costumes and a country of courtesy and justice. I was always fascinated, and so I planned for more than a year and founded the Longfeng Palace Chinese Costume Photography City in Jiangzhou. Today, it is estimated for established for eleven years. Everyone who visits Longfeng Palace goes back to the history of thousands of years and can experience the various Chinese dynasties, can dance with swords and stuff. Burn incense and taste the tea, admire the snow, the moon, calmness, and play the Chinese musical instruments. We must live up to our mission and be a good guardian, a disseminator of traditional culture. China has the great etiquette, so it is called Xia. There is the beauty of uniforms, which is called Hua. The ancestral dictionary textbook Arya said that the Hua of Hua Xia specifically refers to the peach blossoms. From the legendary story of Hua Fu. Who chased the sun and failed? His walking stick became the peach forest. In China, it is commonly said that 56 ethnic groups are the 56 different flowers, and everyone belongs to one family. Ten trees have roots. Huai Shan Shui has roots. Dao Jia's natural and natural, Ru Jia's love for people, Fa Jia's religious thinking, and Mo Jia's serving the world. 阴阳家对天地自然的探索，都是中国文化不可缺少的部分。中国传统文化的精华融入我们的血脉和灵魂，孕育着民族的生命力、凝聚力和创造力，成就了中华文明。The tree which touches the sky has roots. The water surrounding the hills must have a source. Taoist symbolizes with nature. Confucian benevolence, love for others. Legalists have innovative thoughts. Mohi's world for the public, and Yin Yang family explores the world and nature. These are all indispensable parts of Chinese culture. The essence of Chinese traditional culture is integrated into the blood. The soul, nurturing the vitality, cohesion, and creativity of the nation, has made the Chinese civilization. Shu Fa, Wu Shu, Zhong Yi. 京剧、汉服、丝绸、茶道、瓷器、围棋、剪纸和刺绣各有自己的特色和魅力，共同诠释了中国传统文化的核心——宇宙的根本规律——和。天和日月明，地和五谷丰，人和百业旺，家和万事兴。儒家贵中和，道家天地和，世家众生和，风调雨顺，上慈下孝。政通人和，国泰民安，天地未言，万物预言。Calligraphy, martial arts, traditional Chinese medicine, Peking opera, Hanfu, silk, tea, porcelain, paper cutting, and embroidery. Each has its own characteristics and charms. Together, they interpret the core of Chinese traditional culture. The fundamental law of the universe is harmony. The sky, sun, and the moon are bright. The earth and five grains are abundant. Common peoples and their families are satisfied with the industries, and thus everything is prosperous. The teachings of Confucianism is valued for its neutral thinking. Taoism is valued for its harmony between heaven and earth. Buddhism followers are harmonious. Good weather, good fortune, filial piety, longevity, harmony between politics and people, heaven and earth. Are in their respective places, and thus everything grows and prosper. 历史至今，文化对话保持了不同文化体系的持久生命力。中印同为四大文明古国，中印文化是东方最有影响力的两大体系。两千多年来，两种文化在宗教、哲学、艺术、文学、民俗密切对话。印度是佛教的创始国。中国是儒教和道教的创始国。一千多年前，印度高僧达摩祖师译纬渡江，法显和玄奘两位高僧先后西行。
。现代，徐范成先生成为中印文化交流的伟大使者。From history to the present, cultural dialogue has maintained the enduring vitality of different cultural civilizations. Both India and China are the two ancient civilizations and influential culture in the East. For more than two thousand years, these two cultures have had a close dialogue on religion, philosophy, art, literature, and folklore. India is the founding country of Buddhism, and China is the founding country of Confucianism and Taoism. More than thousand years ago, the great Indian monk Bodhidharma crossed the river and reached China, where his two great Indian monks, Fashian and Xuanzang, went to India. In modern times, Xu Fangcheng is the greatest cultural messenger between India and China. In Chinese culture's development, the Chinese Buddhist tradition has become the foundation of Western culture. The Buddhist tradition began in India and has spread to China. 佛教殿堂遍布华夏，更有上亿佛教的信徒，体现了中国文化的包容性。同理，徐范成先生在印度的丰硕成果，以及徐范成文化研究中心在印度的成立，也体现了印度文化的包容性。正如徐范成先生说的：“你若想看老子的哲学是怎么实现的，到本地治理看一看就知道了。”传统文化在当今现代化的发展中仍然有十分重要的意义。联合国 COP 1 5大会的主题“生态文明共建地球生命共同体”，《诗经》中给花草树木、虫蚁鸟兽都起了很好听的名字。《庄子·齐物论》上说：“天地与我并生，而万物与我为一。”我们肤色各异，但血液同色。地球是我们共同的母亲，世界是我们的家园。欢迎大家来中国做中国梦，中国人也可以走出去做中国梦。In the development of Chinese civilization, Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoism blended and became the origins of Chinese national studies. Buddhism was born in India and prospered in China. Buddhist temples can be found all over China. And there are millions of Buddhist followers, reflecting the inclusiveness of Indian culture. Similarly, Xu Fangcheng's fruitful achievements and Xu Fangcheng Culture Study Center reflect the inclusiveness of Chinese culture. Xu Fangcheng once said, "If you want to realize Lao Tzu's philosophy, you should go to Pondicherry, India, to take a look." Traditional culture still has a very important meaning in the modernization of China. The theme of United Nations COP15 conference, biodiversity and ecological. Ecological civilization build a community of life on Earth. The Book of Songs gave nice names to flowers, trees, insects, fish, birds, and bird beasts. Zhang Zhe's equality of things says, "Heaven and Earth live side by side, and everything is one. We have different skin colors, but our blood has the same color. The Earth is our common mother, and the world is our home. Everyone is welcome to visit China to see the Chinese dream. Chinese people can also go out." And dream of a better world. Thank you very much, Ms. Sun Chienfeng, for your beautiful speech. Now you are a partner as well as the ambassador for Xu Fangcheng Culture Study Center in promoting Chinese culture in India and abroad. Thank you. Thank you. Now the second part of our forum begins: Chinese culture and India-China cultural relations. We wish to invite our honorary guest speakers. The first speaker is Acharya Dr. Shiv Verma, Chairman PCR Ayurveda, Director Artfulness Institute. Good afternoon, all dignitaries and delegates of Indo-China cultural relationship. A small brief on Su Fangcheng, formerly known as Fu Zhu in India, who born on 26th October 1999 in Huan Province. He's a philosopher, translator, one of the most well-known Indologists.
he studied sanskrit and begin to read tripitaka tripitaka is a traditional term for ancient collection of buddhist sacred scriptures he was well versed in english german french sanskrit latin and greek he was a good painter scholar and had in depth study of chinese civilization as well as indian and western ones he compared sanskrit from colonial point of demonstrate the profound influence of buddhism on native languages in china and cultural exchange the assimilation between china and india providing new approaches for india studies in china as for china india cultural exchange swangsang was reputed for the translation of works of indian religions and philosophers he was the first chinese scholar who systematically introduced the upanishads into china in early 1945 through a cultural exchange program between china and india he went to vishwabharati university to, to teach the philosophy of ong ching hu at china bhavana he stayed in india for 33 years and turned to study buddhism and indian religion in 1951 he went to sri arbindo ashram in pondicherry in the south of india and became the dean of department of chinese international center for education for more than 20 years he had devoted his devoted to studying spiritual philosophy and yogachara writing and translating in 1978 he returned to china in 1970 worked as a researcher at research institute of world religions of chinese academy social science he passed away in beijing on 6th march 2000 at the age of 91 indo china relationship is not only now it's from 600 ce itself yuan song was a chinese monk in the tang dynasty as well as mahana theorist sutra translator tourist and envoy of chinese and indian cultural exchange he traveled all over india and learned brahmanist classics in the especially learned sanskrit grammar and phonology systematically which laid foundation for sutra translation when he returned to china he learned mahayana and hinayana also also recruited disciples widely inherited tradition of yogachara of indian mahayana and founded singsi school to become a grand master at midnight on fifth day second lunar month of 664 ce master swang who worked hard in his whole life died of illness in yuanna temple the years before fahian was an eminent monk of eastern jing dynasty a traveler and a sutra translator after accepting the complete precepts fahian studied hard and continuously but was often disappointed due to the lack of complete sutras he set out from changa to india to seek for buddhist learning with a fellow student he travel through exi corridor to sanghi pahian studied collected sutras and precepts during the stay in central india he translated six volumes of mahabohyan sutra two volumes yuan sutra for 40 volumes mahasangha pinaya one volume of precepts of buddhist monk he died in singsi temple at the age of 86 in today's world's expectation and health ayurveda the traditional indian medicine and traditional chinese medicine remain the most ancient yet living traditions these two traditions are believing the nature have its own healing qualities we believe the treating the disease from within with the energy when we talk about pondicherry we say pondicherry is a peaceful pondicherry when we look into history 
lot of siddha siddhas are the healers who have an ability to heal the body mind and soul through the siddhis and the traditional indian system of healing it's a siddha ayurveda and yoga this three traditional medicine we treat the disease as the curable diseases and the incurable diseases today's modern world science is classifying the disease into curable disease and incurable disease but when a common patient or the sufferer's point of view there is a solution in india and in chinese medicine even the disease or claimed as a incurable disease there is a methodology there is a proven, proven methodology to reduce the suffering on human being we at peaceful pondicherry we have this traditional healing we welcome the chinese delegates who wish to learn or exchange the knowledge of chinese traditional medicine with indian medicine we most welcome them to pondicherry we, there is a scope for a huge research and this research can give a great results to the entire universe there is a new methodology to heal the suffering we are inviting a long term indo china relationship to continue we at pondicherry wish to be the instrumental for this cultural exchange health harmony and happiness can be the common goal we can take it together to the entire world thank you thank you dr acharya shri varma for your wonderful speech you have been serving the people with your kind heart and dedication we are very thankful to you now the next speaker is professor jang rumi dean of international education college thank you very much dear madam rada ladies and gentlemen it's my great a great honor to be invited to attend 112th birth anniversary of shi fan chen forum mr shi fan chen is an outstanding messenger of modern chinese and indian culture exchanges as a scholar he was sent to tiger international university in indian in 1945 to teach chinese history philosophy philosophy literature etc for 5 years he went to pondicherry in south indian in 1951 he worked in pondicherry focusing on chinese and indian culture exchange for 28 years until he is returned in 1978 mr shi was invited uh, was lived and worked in india for 33 years which is longer than a third of his life i was also invited to attend the opening ceremony of shi fan chen culture study center on behalf of dali university on uh october 26 2020 i still remember the ambassador mr sun wei don't uh, mentioned that friendship between the peoples is the solid foundation of bilateral literature bilateral uh, relations at the ceremony we should hope such more such activities to set up platforms for exchanges between our two peoples and enhance mutual respect understanding and trust education is very important especially for the young people of our countries to carry on the fine traditions of the older generation and contribute more wisdom and vitality Dali University would like to discuss the possibility of collaboration in the fields of education, culture, and academic. China-Indian cultural exchange has a long history of more than two thousand years. There are different topics of China-Indian culture exchanges in Han, 
Tang, and Ming dynasties in fields of geography, transportation, religion, and trade. They were all the sources of China-Indian culture exchanges. It is especially important for the two great countries continuing to develop cult cultural traditions in the new area. The world is underground, is undergoing profound changes unseen in the century. We are actually human community with a shared feature. Only by promoting and developing Chinese and Indian culture exchanges can we adapt to the new area. As my understanding, it is the meaning for us to hold the for forum today. Finally, I would wish the forum a complete success and I am sure it will be a good activity of friendship lasting between China and India in a new period. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Zhang Rumi, for your wonderful speech. We welcome you to come to Pondicherry and we wish to meet you soon. Now, our next speaker is Professor Ram Mohan Singh, Department of Physical Education and Sports, School of Humanities, Pondicherry University. Ma'am, am I sir. audible? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, you are am audible. I audible. Yes, 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 you are audible. Yeah, okay, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Okay. The dignitaries are uh, an immense privilege to deliver this short keynote speech in excellent and high level forum. This meeting and uh, this commemorates the 112th birth anniversary of the renowned scholar Su Fan Chen. I am very much thankful to the members of the Su Fan Chen Cultural Study Center for giving me this wonderful opportunity. It has been our endeavor to exchange and collaborate the vast knowledge between both our countries, namely India and China, especially in the academic fields. With deep tradition, and unique wisdom in possession of both us countries, we have more to gain and much to follow, much to improve, much to work, and much to collaborate in the academic partnerships as much as possible. Yoga and sports science is one such field that immediately comes to my mind where both, both our countries have lots to share and collaborate. With this intention in mind, Pondicherry University and Dali University are working on a which is nearly at the stage of completion. I hope it will be signed soon so that the cooperation can start as soon as the pandemic situation normalizes. Pondicherry University itself is a large green 850 acre campus in the beautiful and uh, tourist and peaceful city of Pondicherry. Pondicherry University supports more than 65 affiliated colleges. We support more than 400 faculty members, 1,500 and more research scholars. We run more than 65 programs. The total student strength in the university is 5,500. And there are more than 74,000 affiliated students, students from the affiliated colleges who are indirectly connected to Pondicherry University. We also run 
60 more than 65 programs in the various departments and schools that are existing in Pondicherry. With this, I would like to see the fruits of this wonderful cooperation between Delhi University in China and Pondicherry University through the Sufanchan Study Center and the Pondicherry of our youth entrepreneurs. Uh, how quickly and how well we could establish and start the exchange programs as soon as possible so that there can be wonderful exchanges and great sharing of knowledge. I would like to close by wishing all of us who are engaged in making this wonderful dream come true. All the very best and very soon we would like to see you all in Pondicherry and through the Cultural Association, I would like to invite the representatives of China and especially Delhi University to our university to meet our Vice Chancellor and also experience the atmosphere in the campus. Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ramon Singh, sir. You are always supportive and active too. So is your speech also. So definitely we'll do a lot of activities with your support and also with Delhi and Pondicherry University. Now Thank the you next very much, speaker. Now the next speaker is Mr. Yu Chan Chow, General Manager, Josha Ningtai Ocean Fisheries Company Limited, Josha, Zhejiang Province. Honorable leaders, distinguished guests, dear my friends, good afternoon. So my name is Yu Jian Chao. I'm the general manager of Zhoshan Ningtai Ocean Fishery Corporation Limited. Thanks very much for the invitation from the association for this online meeting. On the anniversary of Xu Fan Chen's birth, to launch such communication platform for cultural exchange between China and India is very meaningful. On the basis of partnership for peace and prosperity, China and India have cooperation in a series of fields such as politics, economic, cultural, and education, and so on. Cultural understanding and the cultural exchange playing a more and more important role in it. For our company is a enterprise engaged in ocean fisheries, for ocean transportation, import and export trading, storage, cold chain, processing. At present, we have 151 oceans squeeze fishing vessels and the non-fishery transportation vessels. We are the largest private enterprise in squeeze fishing and transportation in ocean for China at this moment. So speak of India, our company also have fishing jiggers sailing between the India and China all year round, working in the India Ocean. So in fact, our two countries already have a lot of communications and friendly cooperation due to the fishing industry in the India Ocean and also inland. One of the lights we saw from our fishing vessel in India Ocean maybe is come from, from Pondicherry. So luckily, uh, in actually for Two or three years ago, uh, we had a chance to visit Pondicherry for the business cooperation and the investigation. So luckily we have Mr. Rada and uh, Mr. Kali, very good of our friends, show our delegation around Pondicherry and uh, we meet a lot of new friends in India. I was impressed by the special cultural 
heritage and also the local building style, and also the Long Beach and the East Pontchartrain is very beautiful. We have network together, and we really look forward to visit India and look forward to visit the Pontchartrain again to see our our friends. There are many enterprise engaged in. Aquatic products in Zhongshan City, and we are import aquatic pro products from India. And the India shrimp has very high quality and deeply loved by the Chinese consumers. This enterprise have a strong interest in India fish resource and hope to have the opportunity. To carry out more cooperation projects in aquatic products, even transportation, trading, cultural exchange, and also other fields. So, as me, as a native Zhongshan, I also want to make an invitation to welcome all of you to visit Zhongshan and Putou Mountain. Which is very famous of Buddhism in China, also overseas. I'm sure you will feel different culture, cultural, and visit the islands with a Buddhism. We hope that through our efforts in the fishery area cooperation, and、uh, we can also make positive contribution. To the foreign cultural exchange between China and India, hope Zhongshan and Pondicherry can be more and more cooperation and exchange in the fishery, in the economic, for the trading,、uh, cultural exchange, the tourism, and also Buddhist culture, and also for the other fields. In the end of my speech, I hope this. Conference have will have a complete successful, and may the friendship between the two cities and the two countries last forever. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wonderful speech. We can do a lot of exchanges. As our minister, honourable minister Lakshmi Narayan sir is also the minister for fisheries. So we expect. So lots of exchanges to do between Pondicherry and Joshan. Thank you. Now our next speaker is Dr. Vidya Ram Kumar, Chairperson Craft Council of Pondicherry. Happy evening to all.、Uh, my warm regards to one and all、uh, in China as well as、uh, partners here.、Uh, I represent the, the Craft Council of、uh, Pondicherry. And、uh, it is affiliated to the、uh, Craft Council of India, which was started in the year 1964, and it is to promote art and culture,、uh, to enable sustainable livelihood programs for、uh, the artisans, to also uh, you know uh, help the growth of their families and also the artisans themselves. Then exchange of、uh, technologies and、uh, help them in designing and marketing. And、uh, various other aspects that、uh, that are connected to it, and we also promote、uh, the research and、uh, documentation part of uh, the art uh, artisans. Uh, here, I would touch upon the、uh, sociological aspects as to how to go about with、uh, you know the kind of exchanges that we can have with the both the countries. And I think the main pillars are here.、Uh, we find the Pondicherry India China Friendship Association, which will be、uh, you know carrying out the entire program.、Uh, they have a lot of things to offer from academics uh, to uh, to the student community, facilitating great uh, uh, you know exchanges.、Uh, many Chinese students also、uh, I understand are very inquisitive to come to India. And to learn about Indian culture, art, and craft, and、um, uh, China is one of the top uh, uh, study destinations now.、Uh, many、uh, Indians go to China to uh, uh, do their uh, 
medical as well as uh, technical education the azu kang chang the cultural study center initiated by the pondicherry india china association uh, has uh, immense potential to uh, give directions and you know uh, take things forward for both uh, the chinese as well as the indian students here uh, in the form of exchange programs and um, as uh, china is a global leader in advanced technology the center can conduct technical expos in aerospace robotics artificial intelligence uh, showing chinese modern technological development and further transferring the technical know how to the aspiring young indian uh, minds as well as the chinese india has a lot to learn from china in protecting and uh, pers uh, perceiving the tangible as well as the intangible cultural heritage the center can act as a platform uh, featuring intangible cultural exchanges including traditional practices art forms such as uh, marital art fine, uh, fine arts etc and annual food expo here in india we all love chinese food and i'm sure like you know the same kind of uh, um, now thought process must be there too with respect to the indian food uh and uh, you know showing the chinese culinary we can uh, attract a lot of people in both the countries and a uh, performing art theater uh, where documentaries uh, can be shown uh, for students especially who are into art and craft in the pondicherry university and uh, since it can uh, cover a lot uh, a number of students and exchange program on a routine basis between both the countries can be arranged uh which will definitely benefit the uh, future uh, I mean the upcoming or the future students uh the center truly becomes a vibrant as well as pudicherry with all its uh, activities um pondicherry uh, india china friendship association and uh, the craft council of pudicherry we are planning to work together in order to promote uh, pondicherry chinese based art and craft marketing craft products conducting art and uh, cultural uh, events in various countries in i mean both the countries and guided tours so uh, uh, we look forward in uh, seeing you so thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, good luck thank you dr vidya ramkumar for your wonderful speech we wish that you can travel to china with your colleagues and promote uh, indian handicrafts in china thank you our next speaker is dr lin yanmin deputy director of institute of south china south asian studies yunnan academy of social science thank you uh, thank you miss uh, rada uh, distinguished uh, guests ladies and gentlemen uh, good afternoon uh, I'm very glad to attend this online forum and uh, share with you uh, some of my thinkings and ideas in researching Sino-India relations. My topic is strengthen exchanges and the mutual learning among civilizations to promote the development of Sino-India relations. As we all know, China and India are two ancient civilizations. the exchanges and mutual learning between the two civilizations especially cultural uh, cultural interaction can be date back into ancient time and around a long history however it is regrettable that because of ter uh, territorial disputes and other conflicts the sino indian relations have fallen backwards Uh, which makes the more than 2000 years peaceful and friendly relationships between the two countries have been suffered serious setbacks so i want to take this opportunity uh, to emphasize the following points firstly in ancient time adjoined by common mountains and rivers china and india had kept a long history of amity in chinese ancient books numerous uh, uh, historic uh, historical re records of india as well as interaction with india are too numerous to mention so many exchanges and interactions 
had created the splendid history of all inclusive and mutual learning between Chinese and, uh, and the Indian civilization. For example, the ancient Shu uh, Shendu Road, notably the South Silk Road in full century uh, to be latest, Xuanzang's journey to West in seventh century, uh, Yunnan Dai people's migration to Northeast India in the 30th century, and so on. Next, in modern time, China and India had a common historical memory. The two countries had both suffered from inventions and operations of colonialism and imperialism, <coughs> also had painful experience of colony or semi-colony. During the course of fighting for national liberation and independence, Chinese and Indian people had formed a relationship of brotherhood, which was first uh, featured with showing sympathy, support, and uh, solidarity to each other. Moreover, those experiences had also written touching stories of Sino-India traditional friendship between two different people, countries, and civilizations. Last but not least, in contemporary, China and India have similar dream of the rejuvenation and a similar goal of rising. The two countries have both devoted to promoting economic development and improving people's living standard. So both the two countries call for peaceful and stable international environment. And both the two people of the two country appears to enhance mutual understanding and bilateral cooperation. I want to say, in the age of globalization, no country can develop alone. As His Excellent Chinese President Xi Jinping has said, to meet our common challenges and create a better future for all, we look to culture and civilization to play their role which is as important as the role played by economy, science, and technology. How to make more than 2,000 years exchange and uh, uh, mutual learning between Chinese and Indian civilization spring to new life in this new year, area? I think this is an important and a realistic question that both Chinese and Indian scholars need to reflect on and give answers. For this purpose, I'm willing to share the following suggestions. First, we should learn from the spirit of the presenters uh, like Xu Fanchen to create good conditions and atmosphere for Sino-India interaction. In other words, we should make full use of our respect Effective advantages to dispel misgivings and build confidence for both Chinese and Indian people. Second, we need to exploit abundant historical resources of Sino Indian traditional friendship and fully mobilize cultural aspects of exchange and mutual learning between the two countries so as to help Sino Indian relations rise from the valley bottom. Finally, we had better give priority to people-to-people -people exchanges and cooperation. That means we should positively build more platforms for Sino-India exchanges and mutual learning and promote all-round high-level and multi-channel Sino-India people-to-people contact in various fields such as education, culture, science and technology, uh, sports, media, think tank, uh, media care, and public health. Ladies and gentlemen, looking back, it was hard won that the Sino-India relations kept peaceful and stable on the whole, 
looking forward. Owning by joint efforts from both sides of China and India, Khan will write new chapters of China-India friendly exchange and uh, cooperation. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lin Yanmin. Thank you so much for your beautiful speech. We welcome you to Pondicherry. Now, Thank the you. next speaker is Ms. Sao Chendri, head of the Indi Department, School of South and Southeast Asian Languages and Culture, Yunnan Minzu University. Thank you. Atalniya Deviyo or Sajino, Ap Sapiko Meli or Say. Namaskar. Good afternoon. Namaskar. Firstly, let me start by expressing my deep gratitude to all of you. It gives me a very great pleasure to have this opportunity to exchange ideas with you. Uh, because I have a lot of memory, good memory with India, so always missing, missing her, my second hometown. And now, many of our students they are working in various India states. They also have very special feeling with India. So we are so proud of them. Why? Because we are doing the same thing that is serving for India and China. This afternoon, my topic is great, creating new spaces on India-China interaction in Yunnan. I'm going to elaborate part Brief introduction of Yunnan Minzu University's Hindi major and the cooperation with India universities. Second, enhancing educational cooperation for further Yunnan cooperation with India. Third, how to promote the exchange and cooperation of higher education between India and China under the COVID-19 epidemic. Now, first, I will introduce our university's Hindi major. Yunnan Minzu University has opened up 15 less commonly taught foreign languages in South and Southeast Asia countries. They are Hindi, Bengali, Nepali, Pashto, Sinhala, Urdu, Tamil, Thai, Burmese, and another Southeast Asia languages. It's a domestic open, one of the most complete professional institute of South and Southeast Asia languages languages. This move movement has met the goals of serving leapfrog development in Yunnan and opening Yunnan as a gateway to South and Southeast Asia. So our president uh, Xi Jinping, he has said, friendship, which derives from close contact between the people, holds the key to sound state-to-state -state relations. So we can see the language plays a very important key between our communication. And our university is the first university in China that offers Hindi major to carry out three plus one education mode within the universities. Hindi language specially implements three plus one school running mode and the students will study in India for a year as a juniors. In addition to improving in language competence, they could also get to know the objective, countries, history, culture, policies, economy, traditions, customers. So, and uh, except that we are keeping good school level exchange and cooperation with famous universities like uh, India's JNU, Delhi University, Gandhiya Hindi Sanstan, Gujarat University and EDI, Visual Party University. Experts and schools from, from the universities above come to our university to develop teaching, science, scientific research, academic, and other exchange activities throughout the year. But it's so pity because of the epidemic. So now our university, we couldn't continue our international communication with India universities. And today we have seen we have the Pondicherry Sami University. So sincerely hope we can do something point to point, step by step. And we can send, after epidemic, we can send our students, especially Tamil students, 
and uh, to Bandejili to exchange the communication. And uh, uh, second, uh, some suggestions for promoting education cooperation between India and the Yunnan. We all know education is the foundation of all communication and cooperation. When communication and cooperation in the educational field is carried out, when the language and culture of associated state is studied, and when people with ability in, reg in regional cooperation are cultivated, then further communication and mutual understanding will be achieved. Only through full understanding and trust can the communication and cooperation of regional humanity be carried out as one of the provinces of Southwest frontier. Yunnan has advantages it in its geographic human resources. In, it, in addition, cooperation in education has attached great importance to the consideration of improving communication in the field of human, humanity. And uh, we should, how we can do something. First, broaden information channels, encourage and support students from both sides to study in the target country, particularly to learn urgently needed subjects related to the economic and social development of Yunnan. Second, we can build China and uh, India University Islands. Colleges and universities in China and India, according to our needs, jointly carried out some following activities. For example, faculty and administrative staff visits, students exchanges, research materials, publication papers, and other academic exchange of information. Third, formulate relevant uh, policy at the government scholarship for both sides students. You know, both India and China, we are big, we are two big countries, but every year only we have, there are 25 students, we get, we can get the scholarship, exchange scholarship. For the two big, for the two big country, only 25 scholarships, it's very limited. So we hope we can, between our government, we can aid the scholarship seat number and uh, encourage Chinese students to go in there to understand real Indian culture and also welcome our Indian students come to our China, come to Yunnan, come to Kunming. And fourth, strength culture exchanges actively carry out culture and people to people exchange in various, in various forms and uh, increase mutual trust and understanding. And uh, we can organize some cultural series, hold yoga and Tai Chi week for film festivals, book exhibition, even art exhibition, ethnic traditions and ethnic customers. Like that, we can train a group of Miss India and Miss China so that they can become the cultural messenger of bilateral ex exchanges. And uh, finally, we all know during these two years, it's very special. The COVID-19 epidemic has disrupted the normal operation order of the global economy and uh, society and uh, disrupted people's normal life. So now we can think how to promote exchange cooperation and how cooperation of higher education between India and China under the COVID-19 epidemic is a challenge for us at present. We hope during outbreaks still can continue to keep cooperation with universities in India, cooperate online course to be able to introduce more, in, more Indian culture elements of domestic classes. And we also wish can get our in their friends support and help with you together to build that international communication platform for our students. And we know our young generation is the future, is the two countries future. And uh, finally, on behalf of our university, I sincerely want to invite our India friends come to our university for guidance. 
Thank you. Wish, wish you all the best. Thanyawad. Thanyawad, Madam Sao Chen Rui. We welcome you to Pondicherry. Your speech was really very interesting. And we would definitely like to have cooperations with your, with your university to help encourage both the city of the students to learn their cultural languages as well as in helping them to get scholarships and help them to study all the languages and other cultures of both China and India. Thank you. Now our next Thank speaker. You. Now our next speaker is Mr. Victor Ia, CEO in Spices International Lux Interiors. Yeah, as Mr. Victor Ira is unable to just come in present, so we are just, he has sent a video for us. We shall just watch the video. Most honorable ministers, most respected dignitaries of the dais, highly esteemed guests of the event, ladies and gentlemen, Wanakam, Namaste, Wan Xiang Hao, and good afternoon all. I am greatly honored to attend this symposium in commemoration of Professor Zhu Fan Sheng's 112th birth anniversary. Please allow me to take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to the organizers whom I have come to know through Mr. Gobidan, the General Secretary of Pondicherry Youth Entrepreneurs Network. Today, Professor Zhu Fan Sheng is well known to modern literature as a Chinese scholar. He himself was an ardent disciple and a promoter of Sri Aurobindo's philosophy. Professor Zhu was a painter, a translator, a well-learned scholar, philosopher and a polyglot, a person who knew many languages. It's worthy to state what Professor Zhu Fan Sheng has contributed towards the cultural exchange between these two countries is a masterpiece that cannot be replaced by anyone today. Wars, famine, state failures, revolutions, reforms and economic boom is what we remember of 20th century China. But for Professor Zhu, it was a time of utter calmness. For 33 quiet years, for Zhu, he worked hard as the ancient pilgrim, studying and translating the classical writings of India, which had the deepest philosophies of all. Professor Zhu has been often credited with not only introducing Indian philosophy to China, but also inspiring Chinese universities to teaching the works of Sri Aurobindo. As uh, Matri Prasad, an ashram inmate, has said, he firmly believed in the spiritual message of Sri Aurobindo that proposed India to maintain a universal brotherhood with all countries. Professor Zhu turned from being a radical young intellectual into a thinker, making Eastern philosophy his source of spirituality, something China shared with India in ancient times and could still be valuable for modern man's existence. And it will be more than being valuable as we can know from Professor Zhu's writings and more importantly, which derives from his entire body of research. He re-emphasizes that man's inevitable journey from the industrial and bureaucratic systems of the modern times will be toward moral independence and spiritual well-being. Professor Zhu also translated Aurobindo's works such as uh, essays on Gita, Foundation of Yoga, essays on Yoga, A Holy Profession, etc. Professor Zhu was much passionate and was interested in the spiritual practices of Sri Aurobindo at Pondicherry. Sri Aurobindo developed a spiritual practice he called Integral Yoga. The central theme of his evolution of human life surrendered in divine body. Professor Zhu not only translated Sri Aurobindo's works, but he implemented and promoted the universities to promote yoga and practice in day-to-day -day life. 
One of the important philosophies of Sri Aurobindo was Sat Chit Ananda. Sat Chit Ananda is a Sanskrit term that describes the nature of reality as it conceptualized in Hindu and yogic philosophy. The word Sat refers to truth, absolute being or existence, that which is enduring and unchanging. Chit stands for consciousness, understanding and comprehension. Ananda expresses bliss, a state of pure happiness, joy and sensual pleasure. It is said that Sat Chit Ananda is the source of all consciousness and all perfection. To experience Sat Chit Ananda it is to achieve the ultimate goal of the spiritual journey in Hinduism or Yoga. It is for this ultimate goal of Sat Chit Ananda Sri Aurobindo goes and Professor Zhu Fan Chang entertained spiritual journey and yoga in their life. The embodiment of the concepts of Sat Chit Ananda and the journey towards yogic way of life. Aurobindo considers Sat Chit Ananda to be the eternal and unified concept of soul which is beyond space, matter and time which Professor Zhu had put in practice in his life. True to the tradition of uh, Indian yogis, Professor Zhu roamed around India in search of this truth, in search of knowledge and fulfillment, which he found in Banaras to start with, where he mastered Sanskrit and in Arbindo Ashram, Pondicherry, where he stayed for the next 27 years and gave full play to his expertise in Indian, Chinese and Western civilization in his writings and translations. Professor Zhu compared his teacher Zhao Juni with uh, Sri Arbindo Ghosh, his spiritual guru, for he believed that Arbindo was a true inheritor of the mainstream Indian culture and studies of the Vedas, Upanishads and Bhagavad Gita. Zhu believed that the Chinese nation could survive and preserve its culture because of its character that has an indelible imprint of Confucianism. Finally, to conclude, Professor Zhu came to India in search of the hidden treasures which many countries have been de deprived of. And when he found it, he went back to his nation to preach about that. So, Professor Zhu came to India in an unending search for spirituality and he returned as an ambassador of those discoveries. Thank you one and all. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, Victor, sir. It was a very inspiring speech. Now, our next speaker is Mr. Gobidan Murugayan, General Secretary of Pondicherry Youth Entrepreneurs Network. I am honored and privileged to stand before this December gathering to speak in the symposium. Remembering the scholar and artist Professor Zupan Chang in this 112th birth anniversary, what Chang was the respect and care he had toward the rich legacies of both the countries. He deeply trusted that education and learning have no boundaries. Something that is impressive about China is the great strife that China has made in education in very short period of time and its ambition plan for future with the youth population. This is wonderful opportunity for me to speak about the pillars of the country, the youths. It takes a lot of dedication and ample amount of effort in building a nation that has almost eradicated illiteracy. Over the past 20 years, China has almost eliminated illiteracy among its 1.3 billion citizens, extended nine years of basic education across its expansive territories, developed elite high school with education across its. They have adopted a rule of educating themselves without dilating the moral values of life and their very own culture, which has always been a strong cause of success and growth. 
There is a saying of Victor Hugo stating, change your opinions, keep to your principles. Change your needs, keep intact to your roots. This is where success and growth depends on. Another quality of Chinese that is etched on my heart is their team effort that the youth adapt to and their courage to form an efficient team. This quality of youth is very important towards their own growth and the growth of the nation as the whole. As said in English, courage is the fairest adornment of youth. Youth have always been a reason of building a moderately prosperous society in all aspects. Youth are obviously the strongest pillar of a country. Youth empowerment is something that has to be implemented and practiced in every and each country. It is attitudinal, structural, and a cultural process where young people gain the ability, authority, and the agency to make decisions and implement change in their own lives of other people, including the whole nation. Youth empowerment is often addressed to intergenerational equity and democracy plan to blossom in a symbolic unit, which can be easily achieved through the use of the nation. Today, although Professor Zhu has left us, his guidance and principle is still vivid in our mind. We successor must carry on a lofty demeanor and moral character. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gopidan. It was really a good speech. You are doing a good job in building the youth entrepreneurs. I wish all the young entrepreneurs who are present here today full success in all your projects. Now, we conclude the event with a thanking note. Thanking all the ministers, all the delegates from Pondicherry, Yunnan province, Dali, Joshang, Longfenggong Palace, Heartfulness Institute, and Pondicherry Youth Entrepreneurs Network so much for providing their precious time for our forum today. We really appreciate and enjoy the forum very much. We wish to extend our warm invitation to everyone and visit Pondicherry. Once again, thanking you all and welcome you all to Pondicherry. Thank you, 我们诚挚地邀请各位参观本地治理，再次感谢和欢迎大家。